okay? Um, I want John to start with his experience, alam nyo si John, of all the entrepreneurs we have assisted. Kahit na si Tony Tarkachok of Joy, I don't think he has had that experience. We have to make the morning of the U.S. Wala din experience na ganyan si Joma. I want John to tell you exactly how it is to sell this product in the United States. Si John, nagbukas ng Aqua Swiss sa Camarillo Outlet in Actually, medyo, medyo mahirap yung buhay sa Amerika. <laughs> so, uh, parang ano na lang. Uh, parang well, nobody yun uh, na nagpunta doon. So, not knowing kung ano yung expect mo sa market. So, uh, when I got there, ang hirap pala kasi you have to uh, do everything by yourself. Ikaw na yung driver, ikaw yung delivery man, ikaw yung display man. Ikaw rin yung magbebenta. So, uh, uh, sa buong, uh, sa buong uh, three months na uh, nandun ako, mm. uh, doon sa mga kinyak ako, pag tumatawag ako sa mga kinyak na yung kinyak, kasi nga sila sa pito na gusto ko na umuwi. Kasi nga, uh, ngayon lang ako naka-experience na gano'n na wala ako nang kasama para tulungan ako pag-uwat man lang or mag-display ng items ko. But it was such a humbling experience uh, bringing your products uh, outside of the Philippines. Kasi uh, alam naman natin na uh, sa ngayon, dominate na yung mundo natin and global brands are coming into our country. Uh, what we should do is to bring Filipino brands uh, outside of the Philippines and bring them uh, to the global uh, market. Kasi I think uh, Filipino brands uh, have that quality and have that uh, parang uh, criteria to uh, go against mga big brands uh, from uh, the other countries. So uh, actually yun yung parang goal namin nila Ma'am Linda and Mr. Richie. Uh, that's why we're uh, teaming up and collaborating with different uh, entrepreneurs uh, to uh, bring our brands uh, outside of the Philippines and uh, hopefully expand uh, in the rest of the, the world. That means one of the goals kasi is really to bring the brands global. And from the experience of John, masyado malungkot pag nag-isa ka sa Amerika na nagpapenta. Pero what John did not mention is this. There was, there was a girl an American girl na 8 years old, 8 years old, uh, prim and proper na bata. Mayaya siya. Grandmother, no? Magkasama yung grandmother, mayaya. Pumunta kay John. Can you give me a perfume that has vanilla? Sabi ni John, oh, this is the perfume that has vanilla. Alam mo sabi ng bata, this is perfect. This is what I want. Iba yung pakiramdam mo na may mga particular na mga tao na kahit hindi Pilipino likes your product. That is something that you cannot take away from an entrepreneur. That is the happiness of an entrepreneur to be able to go global. Kahit na mangyak-ngyak na si John, <laughs> kasi siya nagbubuhat lang. But at the end of the day, you put, when I look at John and he's selling his products and people buy, iba yung mukha niya. So, one of the reasons why this, I call this group the Founders, uh, Founders Synergy Fusion. These are all founders. So maybe one day you will all go to the U.S. Hindi na si John mag-isa nagbubuhat. Magkabuhat na sila ni Richie. Parehas na sila nagbubuhat ng mga, because, 
There's nothing to do. I mean, that's, that is the United States. That is global expansion. You do what you have to do. Okay? Any more follow-up questions from the group? Uh, you mentioned global brands. Uh, how do you, uh, you might call it competitive edge? How do you propagate it? Uh, how do you inspire, create it? Got the so-called competent, compete, competitive edge against brands available in that particular place. Hi, sir. Okay, when we went to the stage last year to do a simple market research, we checked. Kasi ang target customers naman po namin ng Bibika, mga Pinoy din, di ba? So, tinignan namin, and they don't have the Kakanin and the Bibika that we have here. So, the competitive advantage is we bring the experience of novelty, of family, of tradition in a product that's delicious. So, I we, we scoured California, the West Coast, where Filipinos are, so wala po kami nakita. So, ang laki-laki ng opportunity natin sa, sa US kasi yung mga Filipino basta pagkain. Totoo ba yun? Diba? Mga Pilipino pag pagkain, they will spend. And they will spend something that will make them reminisce home. Yeah. So, I think that's the competitive advantage for our brand and our, our product. Ako may kapalaw sa abang. Uh, I, I noticed kasi sa US, uh, I see yung mga stores nila doon, yung mga restaurants nila, and yung mga concepts nila. Hindi nila masyado pinag-iisipan yung look uh, and design. Uh, siguro dahil nga ang US matagal ng developed country, so uh, naiwan na sila ng panahon in terms of design and uh, creativity. Uh, ng mga stores nila. nila. Uh, unlike yung mga concepts natin dito sa Asia and particularly sa Philippines, pagka nakita mo yung mga stores natin, very creative, very colorful, very uh, uh, yung, yung design natin is, is talagang malayong malayo. Uh, Doon sa mga uh, restaurants abroad, even pumunta ka na lang sa ordinary, let's say McDonald's or sa mga ibang stores doon, may kita nyo ang itsura nila. Kung ano yung itsura nila noong 80s, hanggang ngayon, ganun pa rin ang itsura ng mga stores nila. So, uh, feeling ko yung yung brands natin from the Philippines, pagka dinala natin doon, with our design, with our quality ng no, no products natin, uh, I'm sure, uh, pupuntahan tayo ng mga uh, clients kasi kakaiba na yung itsura natin. Mas, mas parang nag-level up in terms of sa design and sa look ng uh, yung stores natin. Okay, uh, siguro based on experience ng Pure Gelato for the past 28 years, I mean, I mean, we've been to Malaysia, Japan, and United States for many years on brand. And masasabi ko talaga very competitive ang Filipino brands, no? Kami sa ice cream or gelato, mahirap kung tapatan ang foreign brands because, siyempre, premium yung mga yan, di ba? Pero based on the experience namin for the longest time, yun ang paso natin most of the foreign brands, no? Siguro kung meron man tayong deficit dyan o weakness, so is to sustain operating brands outside the country. So, hindi madali kasi iba kultura, nandito tayo sa Pilipinas, nandito yung produkto natin. So I think that kahit kami ngayon na may mga brands kami dadali sa states for the next few months, Siguro iba ang, ang outlook because mas matured and we know exactly yung downfall namin for many years. Kung sa kami nagkulang, uh, ako ang sabi ko as far as products concern, labang tayo. Pagdating sa service concern, labang tayo. It's how we can sustain ourselves and our operation outside the country. Yun ang challenge. Any more questions from the bloggers? Yes. Yes, um, I just started um, my biz business here in the Philippines, but in Negros. Um, yes, uh, anniversary last April. But I stay in Australia. Can you advise me? Like, you know, as a... As a... 
and do you have any branch in Australia? What's the question? Yeah, um, I just started my business and um, just one year in Philippines, but I stay in um, Australia. So can I have an advice from you guys? Um, cafe, restaurant. You're in cafe yeah. here. You don't have a cafe address in Australia. Yeah, I manage online. Yeah. In, in maybe, as far as Australia is concerned, uh, maybe five years ago, I was part of bringing potato corner to Australia. If I compare the U.S. and Australia, I will veer away from Australia at all costs. Australia is... You have discrimination in Australia. There are very, very strict rules in entry of goods into Australia. It is very expensive in Australia. It's very expensive. And, uh, and the customers are a little difficult to handle because it's very much influenced by the British. And kung Pinoy tayo, Wala, walang British influence tayo eh. We have the U.S. influence. So understanding, understanding the British influence is a little difficult. So um, you can try to do your business in Australia, but maybe do it in Melbourne or in Brisbane. Because in Sydney, it's a little difficult. Okay, did I help you with your yeah, question? Yeah, thank Any you. Any more questions from the audience? Yes, uh, Mr. Black, I'm uh, Mr. YouTube. Um, Mr. YouTube. There's a lot of people who have a problem with the guys who are in the past. They have a uh, lot of people who would want to be entrepreneurs for the touring. And uh, how can you advise them, uh, even though they have their ideas, but they don't have the capital to open a business? And do you have a business? Yeah. Uh, in my case, because uh, our business is peanuts, so Let you... before you an before Josie answers the question, para lang may ano kayo, may something background. When Josie talked to us how many years ago? Ten years ago, fifteen years ago. Si Josie was selling peanuts sa bilao. He started that way just to show you that that. An entrepreneur can start small. You don't need millions to start a business. Josie started her peanuts with Bilao. And look where she is now. How many stores do you have? Uh, right around 80 plus. She has wow. 80 plus stores. Wow. She has 80 plus stores. And she started with her small Bilao of peanuts. So that should inspire you, Josie. Your floor. <laughs> Yeah, uh, just like what Mom Linda said, na we started really small. Um, imagine 10,000 10, pesos na kapag start na kami. Uh, ano yun na, aside from yun sa uh, deposit sa mall, security deposit, uh, you need three months uh, capital for the security deposit. Pero as much as possible, talagang uh, tipid kami. And then we started really small. Pinaikot lang talaga namin. Kasi, of course, we have to think big. Well, it starts small. Para medyo conservative tayo. And then, um, natuto na kami kina Ma'am Linda about uh, market study. Importante yun. Because in starting a business, hindi tayo pwede ano eh, maging uh, uh, yung sobrang impulse, hindi dapat ganun. So, we need to study the business concept. So, yun. Uh, start small sa, pag, uh, sa capital. Pag-ikutin lang natin. Uh, Project study. Any more, any more questions? Uh, Mama, may dadagdag na. Uh, alam niyo, since kayo, di ba, sumikat kayo sa social media, uh, YouTube and yung mga Instagram and Facebook, you can use this social media tool or this platform to sell products as well. Kasi influencers na rin kayo eh, di ba? May sarili kayo fan base. Uh, in line with that, saktong-sakto, uh, uh, pwede ko kayong offeran our brand is Aqua Swiss Perfume Bar, the one the ones that you see sa malls. Uh, I can collaborate with all of you 
to have your own brand of aqua swiss perfume to sell particularly exclusively on your platform so you can have your own line uh, ng perfume lines nyo kayo mamili ng scent kung anong scent na gusto ninyong ibenta under your brand collaborating with aqua swiss and you just sell it through your uh, platform so uh, pagka may nag-order sa inyo uh, orderin nyo sa amin pwede natin i-ship na lang through uh, through yung mga uh, shippers and uh, we share the ano kung ano yung percentage na income na pwede ninyong kitain that way wala kayong magiging buhunan Okay, maybe one, any more questions? Uh, Ma'am Linda? Yes. Ma'am Linda, what's common with the group, uh, they're into franchising. Um, it doesn't have to be that you'll start from scratch. Try franchising. Uh, there are already established brands. There um, are high-end uh, 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 franchise brands, but there are small ones, but you have to check lang. Uh, if these are legit, okay? So you can probably pull your resources uh, as your friends, relatives, if you have OFW friends, tapos uh, look around. Uh, I think franchising is also the best, safest way if you want to start uh, uh, going into business. Kaya dito lang, kasi meron din naman mga government agencies na tulutulong, tulad ng DOSK. O kailangan na equipment. Kasi kami nun, yung wala akong mixer. So ang ginagamit ko lang manual, mixing pero inisip ko pag manual mixing konti lang magagawa na so may mga tumutulong na government agency like USP sa mga equipment tapos walang interest so dun kami na pero ng mga equipment sa so, nagamit namin ito what's up guys ay hindi yan masagot what's up guys What's up, Pilipinas? <laughs> What's up, guys? What's up, Pilipinas? Ayun, yan. A question po. Kasi po, uh, regarding Filipino brands, uh, when I went to Singapore, I visited Hopper Centers. So, sa mga pinapuntahan doon. Well, there was a Filipino brand na walang nakabila sa kanya. Parang, eh, ano na, una, awa na ako kasi yung crew, nakatambay na lang, walang ginagawa. So, matalang yung ibang mga stores, ang dami, ang haba ng pila. Pero, when I went to um, Hong Kong naman, there was a brand na, na-mention pa, yung Potato Corner, may pila. Katabi pa niya yung isang brand na, uh, yung mga pancake na bubble, bubble pancakes pa. Ano tawag mo yun? Kalimutan ko pa yung mayroong pwedeng palaman sa loob yun na yung waffle na may parang bilog-bilog na eh guapos yun, may pila ko sa akin magkatabi sila pero may pila rin yung Pilipino brand which is potato corn So, um, parang nakikita ko kasi yung Pilipino brand na uh, mga Pilipino dishes natin parang hindi ganun kasusikat sa mga out of the country pero Kung pa, yung Pilipino brand is carrying uh, a boring, parang boring brand, product, product eh, diba? Fries or potatoes or, siyempre, pamilya mo ang mga foreigners ng potatoes, diba? The um, French fries. So, what is your advice? Kasi, ang parang mahirap dalhin yung Pilipino dishes, cuisines abroad. Pero, madali eh, mag-create ng Pilipino brand na ang kinikiri, diba? Ayan, milk tea. Milk tea is very popular in Taiwan, and so on. Nung nasa Hong Kong ako, pipilaan yung Tiger Sugar din. Pero hindi ganun kahaba dito nung simula dito sa Pilipinas. So, uh, what is your advice? Uh, what should we carry? Uh, yung Filipino dishes? Or yung Filipino brand, pero we're carrying dishes na foreign influence? I think, you know, it's different. Um, with the advent of social media and all the chefs, the foreign chefs that has featured Filipino brands, like Anthony Gordon, um, I was in New York a few years back. Um, 
There's a store in downtown Manhattan, right? in lower Manhattan. It's called GQ. Wala pa siya before. Wag lang tao, pag may lang mga pinoy. And the, yung mga co-workers namin ang ito. Pwede namin explain. Pero, because there was a famous chef that ate there, all of a sudden, for the Americans were there. So I think ngayon it's different because we have YouTubers, we have vloggers who are very aggressive in promoting Philippine products. So uh, the more it's the Philippines as a social media capital of the world. So we should capitalize on that. So I think ngayon, marami na eh, marami na. It's very famous. If you go to New York, LA, the food trucks, there's a food truck I think it's called White Rabbit. Serves to the people. Madami yung ina. Everywhere they go, they announce where they're going. Ang haba ng ina. Makita mo, may Mexican, may Americans. Um, I think now, we have an edge. Kasi our cuisine is different. Hindi ka na yung typical American Potatoes, steak, ngayon. Kasi ngayon, they're craving for uniqueness. They're craving for different flavors. They want to be cultured in a way. Na kasi sabi nila na, I've been able to taste the Vietnamese food, the Filipino food, you know. So, I think our edge, our, our, um, siguro, our edge, you do like Carinos, is, ano, it's, it's, uh, it's a taste of home. And then Filipinos there can say, hey, you have to try this, because this reminds me of my childhood. So I think carrying Filipino brands now, meron na siyang part. Thank you. Any more comments from the group? Any more questions? The, the question of, the question of um, Filipino brands, I have to accept in the States, if you go to Filipino restaurants talaga, minsan may hiya pang pumasa. Kasi, yung kanilang menu nakastyro pa. Tapos yung 